Okay, I don't normally ever do any unboxing videos, but I'm going to do an exception because I don't know what I'm up against. But I ordered a new telescope, and it's the Aperture D12, not the AD12. There's only three very short videos on YouTube on the actual scope. So this is the cheapest 12-inch you can find. I paid uh, through High Point Scientific like $730 or $40 for it. Uh, due to the COVID-19, there's no... Literally got a long wait for anything else. I really wanted the 8012, but I got this. The scope itself is coming tomorrow, but this is box two of two. This is the bottom. So I'm going to tear into this. We're going to see what it is and see what the base looks like. And then we'll get the scope tomorrow. I add that in and maybe just a couple shots of the moon with it or something. So if somebody's interested in this cheaper basic 12 inch dots okay right away i don't know what that's some uh bushings two-year warranty get a two-year warranty and then you got it we got it stuff happens if you damage your aperture ap aperture uh, product for any reason within three years after your two-year warranty we'll offer you replacement for 40 percent off retail that is pretty awesome so make sure you register your product. I don't know what these are yet. Nylon bushings. They're a tremendous amount too. Yes. Yes. Here's the base. And that looks like any other. I don't know what that is. That's, I suppose, where the scope goes around. That must be where you could possibly put your own... Um, Teflon in there to make it a little better because I've heard this base being as basic as it is we've got room for improvement Just getting all this out and we'll get the directions What you doing Char? And here's all the components You know what? I gotta go download the instructions. Just remember that. They don't come with it So you have to download them. All right uh, I'd refrain from printing this all out. You're talking 14 or 15 pages. Well, but we'll see how it goes. Never attempt to look at the sun. Here's this part here. Tell you what, versus boring you, I'm going to get stuff set up. At least start putting it on and just explain how hard it is. So, Okay, we're attaching the handle to the base with two medium silver Allen screws. Front side, that's the back side. All right, I attached base right and base left to base front with four of these Allen screws. Nothing hard. I installed the three base feet on with Phillips screws. Okay, we flipped the top base, the base over, got the base plate on, screwed it in with six Allen screws. Next step. All right, it's getting dark. What these are is azimuth axle spacers, and you put more on for a more fluid motion. So what I'm going to do is put two over that to start out with. Okay, now this top goes through. Set that on there. I do believe this goes down in it. Okay, I ended up putting three of them bushings in. Uh, that's pretty good. Now I installed the eyepiece holder. Okay, I've attached each spring spacer to each sideboard, and now I just got to wait for the scope. All right, I had to get out of the sun. The other part of the scope came today. Kind of worried about how dinged up the box is. I hope there's a ton of insulation. And it's giant. Holy mother. I'm gonna need help getting it out of there. Well, there don't look to be any damage. Focuser is actually pretty decent for not being a two-stage. Started sprinkling on that covered scope up. I am pretty much ready to just have my daughters help me. We're going to set this over on the cement onto the base. And then these pieces just screw in. Pretty sure. I wonder if this goes this way. I bet it goes that way. 
because otherwise it'll hit. Okay, I'm going to go get my daughter and we're going to set this on the mount. Well, it's together. This being a base model, you have no tensioners. Uh, just the Teflon pads this sets on so one thing you have to do is use counterweights because I will be putting a Sony a7s on here But as far as moving fluid It's really not that bad Not as bad as I thought it would be uh, It doesn't have bearings. It's riding on Teflon, but it's gonna get the job done the other big bonus it has, comes with a nice cover, and there, that's some weight there actually, that's over a pound. So when that's off, I don't know if I'll have to have any counterweight on there or not when I hook my Sony up. It's going to make it about right. With the cover on, it does get a little heavy, but one thing I noticed for a counterweight is I can take these old ring magnets and set them right on there. I got so many of them, it ain't even funny. Uh, don't want to scratch it, so I might wrap them in um, tape. But I thought that was cool. I'm gonna end up doing that. Wrap these in electrical tape. I got, like I said, about eight of these actually all together. I'll wrap them up, put them in there. That'll be more than enough weight. Now, as far as the focuser, uh, I wish somebody would have showed me that on YouTube or something. This is for the one and a half inch eyepiece. You notice there's no threads there for no camera. So I had to go back to High Point Scientific and order their two inch camera adapter where I got the threads just to run the T ring right on it. It'll go in there. But on this scope itself, I have never seen one that didn't have any threads whatsoever. Kind of a basic focuser. Uh, it does have brass up in, up in here for tensioners for tightening down so for now I found a way I can run prime by just poking the one thing down in it's the exact size of this which I'll do in another video but when that other adapter comes then I can run everything uh, it's actually pretty fluid what I worry about I think you can adjust this see how it's pushing down. See, I got that tightened. There's no way you're gonna... It's actually pretty good. I don't know what this one's for. Well, that don't lock, that locks everything, so no matter what you turn... See there. Watch. I could back that off a little bit. That's pretty neat. Um, finder scope, 8 by 50 Very, very basic. Uh, not understanding. I don't know if I can put an angle in there or not. I might, actually I got a laser finder scope coming, which they'll just shine a green laser right up into the sky. So overall, I'm happy with it. You can't go wrong for the price. Uh, was not really beat up at all, so that was good. And the other one is I got a fan, actually a blower fan that I can, battery powered fan that I can put on here to cool this off or do, uh, bring it to ambient temperature. Or you can mount your own 12 volt cooler fan on and put a little 12 volt battery in. Same thing as the more expensive one. Now the big one is, how do you set this down? I'm gonna be hauling this myself and I think I should be able to set it right on this without hurting anything. I think to do that, I got this foam mat right here. And if we were to unhook the spring tensioners, it should be able to lift that right off and set it on there and then haul the base into my porch and then put that in. I'm gonna see if that works. Well, if I'm not supposed to do it, I'm doing it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be hurting it too much. I didn't feel no, no crunching or nothing. So now you just carry the base in the house and then I'll just pick that up and carry it in. It is awkward. Um, I'm no weakling, but it is kind of hard to carry it in, but it's doable. I got to walk up some steps and everything.
So what we're going to do is the future video, I'll be hooking my Sony up to it and showing you what you can uh, expect out of a 12 inch Dobson. But for baseline scope, pretty awesome. I'm happy. If anybody's interested in their baseline Dobson, here it is. And it's not as bad as uh, I thought. A few minor improvements. I'll get my other focuser on there, or my other finder scope on. My adapter to hook my camera up. I'll be in business. Well, the other thing, this has got a handle where you can carry that with one arm pretty easy. So, not too bad. Here's the moon and prime. Pretty neat. I don't have my other eyepiece holder yet, so I can't go up and put eyepieces in. So we're just looking at this with prime, but give you an idea. 25,000 ISO. That's pretty cool, ain't it? If I turn my ISO down. So what I'm going to do is digitally zoom in on prime just to see if we could see any features of Jupiter. I'd be very surprised if we can. Okay, this is Saturn. Now, I got the ISO cranked up to 20,000, but you can see the moons of Saturn with this scope and prime. If I digitally, even not digitally zoom it in, but I'm going to digitally zoom in and show you. I'm impressed with this scope, I'm telling you. So glad that I traded up to a Dobson 12 inch for video work. Can't wait to get the eyepieces in on this thing. I can crank my eye so way up past that. In fact, let's do it. It's 64,000 ISO. I'd go way higher than that, too. No need to. All right, now I'm going to turn my ISO down. Okay, I got my ISO down to 250 ISO only in 140th second shutter speed. Let's uh, zoom in here, see if we can see the rings decent. Remember, this is digitally zooming in. This isn't eyepieces. Wait till the eyepieces come. Hello? Where are you at? What? Where are you? I thought you were supposed to be home at 12 o'clock. I was not at the time. Did I text you wrong? Thank you for coming. Alright, whatever. As long as you're alright. Yeah, I got you. Alright, bye. Bye. Oh, cool. I just got a satellite. I'm following it. Hold, moving the scope by hand. Is that cool or what? Man, I love this scope. I'm only at 6400 ISO. I'll turn her up a little. Turn her back down. I was just panning around. And I thought I lost it there. We haven't seen it moving. That's how fast it's going. Right there, scope stopped. I cannot see that with my unaided eye at all. Take one more pass with Jupiter. I'm going to zoom in. 
see if it looks any different now that it's a little higher in the sky Okay, now I'm going to scoot over to Saturn, and we're calling her quits for tonight. Okay, there's Saturn. Let's zoom in on that one last time, and I'm going to go in and the house and impressed. Right, right here is the neighbor's yard light, which is about 750 yards away. I wonder, you can almost tell what kind of moths are flying around a yard light. Is that cool or what? And that there is 160,000 ISO. As you can see, all the fog, I had to turn it down. Tremendous amount of fog right now in front of this house and everything. Just showing you that how much fog there is.